baby gorgeous welcome to bravo and please where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the bravo tv world this is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related so grab your can of goodies and let's get lit Yes, we're live on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, also on IG. But if you're on IG, make sure you come over to YouTube because this is where the action is at. I see Serafina. I see Sean Ellis Rogers. We got the party started. It's Friday the 13th. Yikes. I This whole week has been insane. But I am your girl, Jenny Blaze, and like I said, we're live every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook to bring you all the latest in Bravo pop culture and weed news. However, let me just give a disclaimer that this is for entertainment purposes only. I literally am using grassroots methods here, people, okay? Meaning social media, DMs from sources themselves, and other rumblings and gossip Let's be honest, it's gossip, right? Um, but that's why you can always hit me up on Instagram. I do have a new rule for 2023, and I'm making a hard rule that anything I discuss in DMs with anyone is confidential. And it has been that way up to date, but I want to be clear and communicate that to everyone so that you know well, I will never screenshot a DM. I will never um, share private information, obviously, unless you like tell me to like, hey, can you put this out there? <laughs> so, but I'm also, I live with integrity and honesty and I can't help but like knowing some things. So I try to keep everything private, but know that I might know that you know that I know that they know that we all know. Just kidding. Um, <clears throat> so I may like slip up. I hope I will do my best not to ever slip up. Um, but I do have a little bit of tea where I'm not going to say where it's from exactly. But and anything that I talk about on this show is never to uh, hurt anyone intentionally or anything like that. So I hope you all are aware of that. I'm trying to maintain integrity and demonstrate by leading, by example, living authentically and with your values. So those are my values. <laughs> and I'm usually caught up on all the latest chatter, but also I'm only human. And literally, this is a one woman show. There's nobody here but me. I remember the first day I started, I was like, this is the weirdest thing ever. I'm literally talking to myself. And actually, who cares what I say? Because I don't think anyone's listening. But anyways, okay, so for today's episode, we will be going through all the newest shows that have aired on the Bravo Network for this week. We have Real Housewives of Potomac, Family Karma, Below Deck, Southern Hospitality, Below Deck Adventure, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Real Housewives of Miami. I watched a few episodes of Watch What Happens Live, but not all of them. And I wanted to give an honorable mention to Love Without Borders because, I don't know, it's just not on my roster right now. I only have limited time. And I did watch, like, the first episode, and the whole concept was, like, too weird for me to, like, really grasp. So not that it's weird, but, like, it's I can't relate to it because I'm married and, like, I can't imagine, and I have children. So like, even if some, I guess maybe someday when I'm like old and a widow and my kids are old, I don't know. I just, it's just not on my list. Anyways, Million Dollar Listing is another honorable mention because I do love that show, but I think I need to binge it. I don't, I need to see like the whole um, sale <laughs> for each home from beginning to end. Anyways, um. As always, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and turn on notifications. Um, don't worry. If you miss the live show on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, you can always watch the replay anytime. 
or you can listen to the audio podcast on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and now, I wish I had drum roll, iHeartRadio. Remember I told you guys in the beginning, just a little bit at a time. We're getting there, adding more platforms. We're doing, we're doing the thing. And subscribing, reviewing, sharing, liking, or leaving a five, and maybe not or, and leaving a five-star rating is the freest way to show your support. Also, don't forget our social media handle is at Bravo and Blaze on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, and probably anywhere else. Um, I don't know where else people hang out, but I can only hang out in so many places. And as you know, BravoandBlaze.com has all sorts of fun Bravo-inspired merch and products from some of your favorite shows. For example, the grandfather mf -er mug. I talked about this one last week. I use this one like daily, so that's why it's that's why I'm talking about it. And I have a whole bag of other stuff from my shop, which is in my trunk, but I have like a bunch of books on top of it, and I just can't handle that right now. <laughs> so I will show more of the merch in upcoming episodes. So hang tight. Cannabis Mom Boss. If you're not aware, my other podcast is called Cannabis Mom, Mom Boss. And if you're an entrepreneur, a spying entrepreneur, um, small business owner, cannabis consumer, wants to break the stigma, um, or maybe a mom who just like really is not into being a stay-at-home mom. I said it. I say it. I'll say it again. I don't like being a stay-at-home mom. I love my children, but I don't like being a stay-at-home mom. It's not for me. <laughs> Especially when you go from running a $200 million business to doing absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, not for me, not for me. But um, on Cannabis Mom Boss, I share stories of my life, um, like the time my kid, as as a cannabis mom boss, this is very disturbing for me. My kid bought and took an edible at school and we're still kind of like dealing with it a little bit, but I did a podcast episode on it. And so did I put the, I don't know if I put the link in the show notes, but I'll make sure I go back and put it in um, if you're interested. But also I talk about lessons I've learned from my entrepreneurship journey that you can apply to your own businesses, investments, transformations. You need a hype queen. This is your girl. And the mission of Cannabis Mom Boss is to empower others to safely, responsibly, and confidently come out of the quote unquote green closet to modernize the perception of today's cannabis consumers. Cannabis Mom Boss is live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Unless there's some kind of special occasion going on. Um, but here on this same YouTube channel, which is also available for replay if you miss the live stream. And if you are a podcast listener, you are in luck because Cannabis Mom Boss is available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. I feel like I'm talking with an accent, which is weird. But And iHeartRadio, just like Bravo and Blaze. Moving on up. And also I want to mention... My Cannabis Mom Boss Manifestation Framework. If you are someone who has been wanting to do something that maybe you've never even told anyone. Like, I am guilty of that. I've done things where I'm like, I'm scared to say it out loud because I feel like people are going to judge me. I feel like people are going to shame me or tell me that I can't do it or whatever. I know I can't be the only one. But also things I've done, I've made attempts at things and just like, Maybe I've realized that I don't like what I'm trying <laughs> or maybe, maybe I didn't actually put in my full effort. Like I'm an all or nothing kind of person. So, um, but if you're one of these people, then the cannabis mob boss manifestation framework will get you results that you're looking for. And what I did and how I did this is I took all my formal education, all my professional experience and personal successes and developed a manifestation framework that has proven to give results. These are, it contains tools 
that I have not only implemented in my own personal life for success, but these are the same strategies, tools, and techniques that Fortune 500 and top global consulting firms have been using for decades, maybe longer actually, running multi-million and billion dollar businesses. Literally, that was my last role. So I'm not making this up, but and not to to my own horn, but through my coaching, I helped a friend not only get a picture with Redman, but get an actual video with him. We cried together and then we talked about how we manifested that shit. That's right. But just like I am sure you are all aware, as much as you give someone the techniques and tools, sometimes you just need to talk it out with someone or get a little help applying the tools you learn to your own life because everyone's life is different and unique. So with the Cannabis Mom Boss Manifestation Framework, you also receive a personalized and confidential one-on-one session with yours truly, the ultimate hype queen. What, what? This is not on, but I'm holding my kid's party machine microphone. Um, but we'll make sure that we put those tools and strategies that I teach, we'll put them into practice to achieve the goals and see results. Literally, I did this for a living for over 15 years to or for insurance companies that were upgrading their like IT systems. So that was multi-million, multi-billion dollar projects. But if I can do that and I've been able to do things in my own life, then I know that I can help others who really want to do it and who, you know, are willing to work hard. It's not like a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. (laughs) But um, the link to the Cannabis Mom Boss Manifestation Framework is in the show notes. Shoot me a message if you have any questions. And now I'm going to give my shout outs for the week. I just did an episode on Christian Gray Snow's show, his podcast. And I think, uh, and also it's on YouTube. We just recorded an episode last night and I think, I believe it's out or maybe it's coming out tonight, but look out for that episode. We had a good time talking about um, Salt Lake City, Ultimate Girls Trip, and I have that all on my list too, but it was a good time. I love Christian. I met him, well, I spoke with him and interacted with him before BravoCon, but I met him in person at BravoCon, and he was like one of the first people I saw there, and he took a picture, and immediately I was like, oh my God, I feel very overwhelmed. Like, there's too much going on. People are screaming. I need to get out of here. So I left, and because I had to go outside to smoke weed. You can't smoke weed inside. So, and thankfully it was like nice out. So I went outside. I'm smoking. I'm like, oh God, I don't want anyone to see me. I'm on my phone. I go on Twitter. I see Christian, Christian literally right at that moment tweeted something about him stepping outside because it was very overwhelming. <laughs> it was just, I was like, come find me. I'm smoking weed. And it made me feel better because I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one. Because it, it was intense. It was a lot. But I'm ready for the next one. Bring me more. I loved it. Um, also, I recorded a special bonus episode with TJ Dinch from Southern Hospitality that will be dropping on my channel, on my podcast, before the next episode, which airs on Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And before we start going into the shows, I do have some slides for whoever's watching over on YouTube. Okay, I have weed news. And actually, before I go into this slide, I shouldn't have put it up. But um, I went to go do, okay, I'm trying to add in this weed news into like segment into my show every week. And the first thing I do is I go to High Times on Instagram And it's shut down. High Times Magazine is shut down on Instagram because of the content. And I keep trying to explain this to people. Social media censors any cannabis-friendly account. So if you're like a cannabis advocate and you're trying to use 
um, social media and traditional digital marketing methods, it's going to be a lot harder. I'm not saying it's impossible, but there are different things that you need to do to make sure that you're not in a spot. Like look at High Times Magazine, like how much bigger can you get than that? Where Instagram literally shut them down. So that means, let's say High Times started on Instagram, like they just, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know, fast forward, they didn't start with their magazine and they started on Instagram. Imagine they lost all of that, all of those people who go to them for their, their weed news. Like that's insane to me. So thank God High Times is already an established, you know, business. And I'm sure they have a very large email list and contact list or whatever, but, um, and they, everyone knows them, like they have very large brand recognition, but, um, for people like me or like other cannabis advocates, we can't even pay to advertise. We have literally everything is organic, but not just organic. And when I say that, I mean, like you, we have to share things with people directly or people have to, people who are already following us have to share our stuff um, because new people don't see our stuff. And I mean, that just shook, but I mean, it's amazing the growth that we've had with Bravo and Blaze despite the odds. So thank you again. I'm getting off track, but I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to go into this slide. Um, moral of the story, please share with anyone who you think would be interested. Okay, so this is really cool. Um, the National Normal Organization is a very reputable uh, nonprofit organization that um, works in cannabis advocacy. And something that they posted this week was that in Arizona, the Supreme Court finds use of cannabis for morning sickness doesn't constitute child neglect. That is extremely important. And I really want to, to highlight that weed news today because if I was pregnant in New York and they had passed this, my whole pregnancy would have been very different. And who knows what, you know, that would, what would have come out of that. So, um, and that's like the number one question that I get from people, you know, is it okay or whatever? So this right here, if, I mean, you can say it's your, your body, your choice. Like if you don't think that it's safe, then obviously don't do it. But for some of us where cannabis is our medicine and it's helped us to get away from pharmaceutical medication, this is now an option for some people. So I wanted to also give a shout out to Blazing, Blazing with Brie on Instagram. I'll put links in the show notes. And High Society of Mamas because... They are giving workshops on cannabis consumption while breastfeeding. So, and like I, I put in this slide, which if you're listening, I hope you'll join us on YouTube someday so you can see the slides. But um, more people ask about consuming cannabis consumption during pregnancy and during bre breastfeeding more than you would probably imagine. I was like blown away when I started to get into this. But anyways, um, I want to segue into, this is like kind of, this is a mix. This is like kind of Bravo and Blaze, a mix of pop culture, media, and plant medicine, cannabis advocacy. But also what I also advocate for is the use of um, psychedelics for medicinal purposes. And this week on Instagram, Psych Spotlight they um, had a post about Prince Harry and how Prince Harry used psychedelics to cope with grief. And um, they talked about this during his interview on 60 Minutes with Anderson Cooper. Um, and he said he used it to he help heal his trauma. And then there's a quote, which you can see on the slide. <laughs> For me, they cleared the windscreen, the windshield, the misery of loss. They cleared away this idea that I had in my head that I needed to cry to prove to, to my mother that I missed her, when in fact, all she wanted was for me to be happy. I am so team 
Harry, like you don't even know. <laughs> don't mess with Prince Harry. I just love that. I think that, okay, I'm actually going to go to the next slide because I have more on Prince Harry. <laughs> I'm not even a hardcore, like, the Royals kind of fan. Like, I, if you have been following me, you know I hate big crowds. And also, when things are too hyped, it almost turns me off. Like, and things that are very, you know, like, valid to be hyped, like Beyonce, Taylor Swift, um, what's another one I stay away from? <laughs> like those types of things. I'm just like, I don't even want to go there. It's just the, the crowd and the energy is too off putting for me to like, it's not worth it for me. But, um, and with the Royals, I feel like that they have that like intensity as far as their like fandom or whatever you want to call it. Like people obviously are obsessed with them. And I remember even my mother, because I'm the same age as Prince William. We were born in 82. And my mom said, I remember I was pregnant at the same time as Princess, Princess Diana. And like, I was like, that's weird. But I get it now, you know, like knowing their whole story. And it turned me off like the, when William married Kate, I was like, this is too much. Like, well, even before that, like, gosh, I was, how old were Harry and, and William when she died? They were young. So I was the same age as William. Like, I can't even imagine going through that, that I haven't even really like digested it until recently when Prince Harry started speaking out. Cause I'm like, okay, wait, now this is getting good. Um, and I saw what they, you know, like what they were showing in the media about Meghan Markle and like how obsessed they were with comparing her and uh, Kate. It was just like so nuts to me. And then it like kind of died down. They're like, we're, we're leaving, blah, blah, whatever. And now they're coming out with this. And I'm like, holy yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I haven't read the book, but. I saw the Anderson Cooper interview on Sunday on 60 Minutes. The book came out, I think, on maybe Monday or Tuesday. It's called Spare. And people are posting about it, obviously. And I'm just like, like, I'm, I don't even care. I heard some really crazy things, but like, I am team Harry. He's literally been abused his entire life by media. That is not okay. That is not okay. His mother was murdered because of media. Let him speak his truth. I was shocked. There was a Betches post about Prince Harry. And I, without thinking, this is like first thing Monday morning. I think I said this before. Like whenever I go on social media, like first thing in the morning, I have no, like, it's just natural, my natural I don't know. Instincts come out. I'm like, what? I just react. I'm very reactive in the morning, I guess. And I just saw, oh, it was um, the Regina George where she throws up the thing and like there's chaos all over the place. And I said, team Harry all day, every day with the, you know, like muscle emoji thingy. And I did not realize how, wait, was it Betches where I got the other hate with the marathon runners? Because I, the hate I got from putting this comment about Harry, Team Harry was worse than the marathon runners. And I was just like, whoa, why are you so mad? I just think that's like, like oh, he's, he did this and he did that. Like when he would, that was before and he used to address all these things that you're saying and we're all human and we're allowed to mess up, but he's like acknowledged it. And he, he's just telling his side, like literally he was abused. Like this is insane. Anyways, I'm going to move on because um, we got more wild stuff going on this week, but team Harry. Oh, I have this witchy feeling. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just like my, my, creative brain or maybe I am a witch but I the thought of 
laws being amended in the U.S. and Prince Harry becoming president of the United States. This idea just came into my mind. And then Prince Harry declares war on England. Can you imagine? Somebody write that movie. It's going to be a, a hit for sure. I know this. Okay, I'm going to move on. Okay, so other crazy news. So I saw that, and again, this is grassroots people. I'm not like, um, I'm not page six. I'm not like, this is not world news. This is my podcast, okay? And one thing that I saw scrolling through Instagrams from uh, So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey Anna, and he reposted from page six, but it said Anna De Delvey developing reality TV project to shed con artist label. <clears throat> I just like lost my breath for a second. And then Ryan is so funny. He said reality TV doesn't shed con artist labels anymore. It highlights them. LOL. Spot on Ryan Bailey. And also... I think we're at a moment in history where in media, this has not really happened before, where you can't hide anything anymore. Like literally, even if things get leaked, like, yeah, you can sue, but it's already out there. Like we're living in a different time. And just think a bunch of Gen Zers as attorneys, okay? Like, this is the world that we're moving towards. So if you are a con artist, you can't get away with it. And that's why I also question who's running stuff at Salt Lake City, because there you cannot tell me there is no way to know about Jen Shaw's fraud or Mary Cosby's cult allegations. There's even murder allegations online, okay? All I did was Google it. And that was before the show even started. And you can't tell me that they didn't know about Jenny Wen's racist posts. Like, come on. Who are you trying to fool here? But, um, yeah. So, in other wild news from page six, looks like Kanye got married. This is, like, ugh, so problematic. I'm sorry if this picture even triggers anyone. Kanye is incredibly problematic. We know this. But then on top of it, then he goes and marries a Balenciaga designer. Balenciaga is also extremely problematic right now. Like, what is happening? I don't even know what to say. Like, this is nuts. I, I didn't, this is so wild. Anyways, okay. So I'm going to take this off because I don't even want to look at Kanye. Right now. <laughs> but also in other news, we have um, Jennifer Coolidge was on a red carpet and somebody yelled out, Jennifer, would you be on The Real Housewives? And she's like, what? <laughs> They're like, would you be on The Real Housewives? And she's like, yes, very resounding yes. So I'm here for it. Can you imagine? Because we also got news this week about some of the casting from Beverly Hills. I'll get into that in a second. But um, in sad news, um, I also just heard yesterday that Lisa Marie Presley died at age 54. And I am so, so sad to hear that. That is like shock. I was shocked by this. It was shocking news. She's only 54. I didn't. Was there signs of anything? Like, I don't even know anything about this. But um you know, my heart goes out to all of them. I remember when her and Michael Jackson kissed on TV. Do any of y'all remember that? Like, that was not, that was a, like a weird moment in pop culture history too. Anyways, okay. So um, quick Netflix watches for this week. I watch Do Revenge. And I was so pleasantly surprised. Like, I actually want to watch it again. It was really cute, but like twisted and like kind of messed up. I don't know if 
I need to watch it again because I need to know if like how I feel about these people after watching it. Anyways. Okay. So that was really good. But then also on Netflix, I binged um, Madoff. Uh, WTF. That was nuts. Um, I just, it's so sad to me and so pathetic that a grown ass man can't just be like, dude, I fucked up. Instead, he just keeps going and going and going and like would rather be, I think they said it in the, in the show, like he would rather be a liar than a failure. That's insane. Like what kind of sociopath, who hurt you? I need, like when people do stuff like this, they need to be studied. They need to be studied by a trained like psychologists, like the best there is to offer. And one of those people I think who should be studied is Jen Shaw, by the way, which I mentioned on Christian Gray's, Christian Gray Snow's show last night. Oh, and on my blog, because I just, I had to write something about how I felt after the season finale. We'll get into that later. Okay. So, Okay. Other Bravo news before we get into, you know, our weekly shows. Oh, my God. We're already halfway through and we didn't even get to the shows yet. So real quick, the Roni reboot cast, they went on a trip to St. Martin. I, that was that brought me joy because I feel like we need that right now. Like no San Diego Arizona trips like we need St. Martin. I want luxury. If any of you New York housewives are out there listening, or if somebody knows them and can tell them and be like, Hey, listen to this real quick. <sighs> tell them we want to see glitz, glam, luxury, just filthy rich, but legitimate. <laughs> no frauds, please. We are done being abused. That's enough. But also, interesting kind of groundbreaking news this year we had a, new, a first where we had a housewife move from one franchise to another franchise and i'm talking about taylor armstrong she originated on beverly hills then she was on ultimate girls trip and now she's going to be on orange county that was like no one's ever done that and to me i keep comparing um housewives to like sports and I feel like it's as if a housewife got traded from one team to another for the first time in history, which is great news because then that opens and paves the way for more opportunities that are interesting like this. And we got one with Phaedra Parks coming from Real Housewives of Atlanta, who I guess is joining Married to Medicine. I'm dying. I'm dying. I just interviewed Dr. Contessa from Mary to Medicine a couple months ago. And to know that there's only one separation between me and her, like her and, or sorry, Phaedra and I, oh, I can't even talk. I just feel like weird about like this is manifestation again. But anyways, I love Phaedra. Um, and then Beverly Hills, we got news. That Lisa Ren is out. I think it's for the best for everyone. All parties included, including us as viewers. But also we heard Diana Jenkins officially is out. Like, I don't know. This isn't groundbreaking news for me because I would, I would have been shocked if they kept her. I'll just say that. <laughs> but I am going to go to the next slide because my... Boy, Reza Farhan from Shaw's of Sunset. As you all know, Shaw's got canceled this year shortly after Mike was arrested, who I also said a long time ago, I've been saying this for years, Mike is most likely to wind up on D-line. 
out of all Bravo webs. And look at where we are. So am I a witch? Am I manifesting? I didn't manifest that one. Like, I don't want that to happen. I don't want him to do something where he goes on D-line. But um, I'm really excited for Reza because not only did I get to interview him after BravoCon, and I got to meet him in person because we've talked, you know, virtually um, before, but I finally got to meet him in person. And then we had an interview recently because he has his new show, The Traders, coming out, or it came out on Thursday, I believe, on Peacock, and all the shows are out, so you can go and binge that this weekend. That's what I'm doing this weekend. I'm just going to binge the whole thing, and I have a good feeling about this show. I hope it doesn't let me down. I think it's going to be good. But also, Reza, he mentioned on, um, on the episode that we recorded that he's pitching a show about uh, reno home renovations, with Adam to network. So, and we talked a lot about real estate on the show when I interviewed him. So I'm really excited for him. I think as much as I miss him from Shaw's a sunset and I love to see Gigi, MJ and everyone there. I think this is a really great move for him and I'm excited to see, you know, what comes out of this. So moving forward, other news. Oh my gosh. Okay. These are two big things right here. We got the real housewives ultimate girls trip season four casts announced. They're going to Marrakesh. We got Vicki Gunvalson, Gretchen Rossi, Brandy Glanville, Camille Grammer, Meyer, Phaedra Parks, Eva, Marcel, Alex McCord and Caroline Manzo. Okay, I got this from, I. by the way, Bravo by Gays basically is my news. Like, that's my number one news source. <laughs> He's always on top of it. He's always got the breaking news, um, which came from Bravo and Peacock. But, oh my gosh, so many things about this. Like, I'm, I'm shocked that they're announcing this already, but bring it. Like, I'll take it. Um... Shocked that they have four repeats and not be, and it's nothing against those four repeats, but I'm just like, why are we doing repeats already? Right. I don't really want to, I want to see like, I want to see some of the lost housewives, like the ones that like we barely remember or we're like, oh my gosh, remember that? Did that happen? Like, uh, the lady from New York, what was her name? I don't remember. <laughs> See, that's who we need. Um, but there's a, a few from New York, like Julia Weinstein. She only had one season. Maybe if we get all the one season housewives and you put them on, see how that goes. But I do have to say the biggest thing that I'm excited for is Alex McCord. And I'll tell you why. I need, I demand to know how many languages Johan and Francois can speak. Because they've had plenty of time since we've seen them. They were young. And, like, I'm not trying to hate on them. I, I, I'm sure they're doing really amazingly. I just, like, remember how hardcore they were, you know, Alex and Simon were about their parenting. That I'm like, I need to know how it went. Like, did it work? Are they amazing? I don't know. Stay tuned. So I hope she brings it. A little tea. So I made a disclaimer in the beginning of the show about, you know, not, like, screenshotting things. But I thought this was kind of scary. So I'll just tell you guys. I won't say who it's from, but someone on this cast sent me a message because I like it was somebody posted this I don't know if it was on this actual post it might have been somewhere else but I said like not so and so and I did like the ah emoji and they took it as a negative thing I guess and sent me a message and was like I'm sorry that you don't like that I'm gonna be on the show and I wish you nothing but the best 
And actually, I'm like sweating right now just thinking about it. Because like, first of all, I don't ever, like I don't tag Bravo Labs and like, I don't know. <laughs> it just like felt really weird to me. But so that's happening. Um, but let's talk about Catherine Dennis because this news got a lot of people heated, uh, me included. Well, me initially, or maybe just me. I don't know. I'm angry about Catherine leaving mostly because, and I've been saying this, I feel that she was abused on this show. We all watched it. And Whitney, who is the executive producer, is was a man who was way older than her and a position of power who was sleeping with her when the show started and then got butt hurt once the other older creepy predator man won her over or whatever i remember how mad craig was oh you slept with everyone here yet you wish that you got to sleep with her like they oh my god that show is so toxic i can't anyways so i made i voiced my opinion on a post i don't know if it was this one but um people were getting mad i was like oh my gosh first the prince harry people that don't like him and now catherine wow i was shocked you don't support other women how dare you <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move on because we still have a lot more to go through. And I haven't even gotten to our weekly shows. I'll probably like wind up rushing through those now because there's still so much. Okay, we got the Vanderpump Rules Season 10 trailer this week. Here, let me do this. Um, It looks good. Well, like sad, like I'm, I'm nervous. I have grown to really love these people. Like DJ James Kennedy. I love him. I had a licensed substance abuse counselor on my show back in like season two, maybe. And, um, I told him the story about James Kennedy and how he quit drinking alcohol for Raquel and then he was California sober, but she was still, which I am, which uh, he, she was giving him shit for. And at the end, I was like, should James quit weed? And the answer was only James can decide if he should quit weed. So I got the chance to tell James Kennedy this story at BravoCon. And he was the sweetest guy and his girlfriend was so sweet and her mother is so sweet because she's a can of mom too well i don't know shoot retract i'm live i don't know what i can do we talked about it i'll just say that um so obviously this season for season 10 which airs february 8th i can't wait um tom and katie are divorcing we've seen we've never seen them apart we've seen them be together since the very beginning so it's really sad and it sounds like there was like a rule like don't hook up with anyone in the friend group and then tom and raquel are making out in the trailer katie goes off on tom and like tom's response like said a lot I know he's like a nice guy and everything but then like later on he gets a drink thrown on him by James Kennedy and I'm just like what is even going on there's a new restaurant opening up, up in Vegas I wonder how they're gonna like like intertwine this like are they gonna bring Tom and Tom there to show them like oh this is how we mix things and I don't know like what what's the connection is it just Lisa going there and we see her are there any staff members I do want to know um but Shana and Brock get married Garcelle from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills makes a cameo because her son goes on a date with Raquel 
And then we see Raquel having like a huge meltdown. I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm sweating right now. Um, but speaking of James Kennedy's new relationship, like I mentioned before, um, apparently there's some stuff with his new girlfriend where she's talking about his drinking. And then also um, Lala making it sound like she hooked up with James Kennedy while he was dating this new girl. I don't know if that's true. I don't know what's going on. Um, and then even Schwartz and Lala go at it. So Schwartz is like really, he's having a interesting moment. Um, and then I'm sorry, like, I don't want to hear about Randall. Like, I'm so disgusted by him. I don't want to hear anything about him. But the cast photos came out and everyone looks so mature and like, um, I saw something where Shannon was like, uh, nice that half my eyebrow is missing. And people were talking about, you know, like airbrushing and things like that. I'm not mad at airbrushing for certain things like this. I think it's okay to have an airbrush photo. This is like a cast photo. You got, there's a lot going on. So, um, I just thought that was funny, but I think they all look great. Sean Ellis Rogers, Schwartz is activated this season. Oh, yes, he is. This cast does look grown. You're, that's what I'm saying. They look so mature and I'm loving it. It actually, it feels right now. Like it feels like, okay, this is what we we're supposed to see. This evolution of like the cheap sir dresses to like this. This looks good. I like it. Um, but also... Lala, oh, Randall, Lala, ugh. Um, there was a post with uh, Harry Styles in it. It was like a Gucci ad or something. And there was like, he was wearing like a bear t-shirt and a, there was a child-sized mattress behind him, which is like the only prop in the whole photo, I think. That was weird, right? What does that mean? I don't know. Lala got triggered and she posted it and was like, oh, hell no. She said it hits too close to home. And that makes me really sad for Lala. I hope, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I hope everything's okay. We'll see, I guess, on February 8th. All right. Season eight. This picture is courtesy of people, obviously. I'll put links in the show notes to everything. Um, we got the Summer House Season 7 trailer. It It's airing February 13th, 9 p.m. We're entering a new era. It's like seasons. Like, this is a, now we're going to have, like, the youngsters. We're, we're dying down with, like, the housewives. You know, Salt Lake City is coming to an end. Potomac will eventually come to an end at some point and Miami too. So it's good. We got these like fresh face. I don't know. They're not Kyle's my age. Actually, I think Kyle's older than me, but anyways. Okay. So <laughs> is he older than me? He might be older than me. Okay. Anyways, we saw in the trailer that Lindsay and Danielle, obviously, I mean, we already found out that they are no longer friends and we, essentially see this play out. And I hope, I really hope this is not a situation where Danielle is trying to pop the Lindsay and Carl love bubble. And I hope, oh gosh, I don't know. I really like Danielle, but I'm like a diehard Lindsay Hubbard stan. So I don't know. I'm scared. I like them both. I hope I hope I still like them both after this season. Um, Amanda looks sad this season and I kind of get it. She's talking about like not knowing if she can get pregnant. And I almost feel like every woman who goes down this like path of like, I'm going to get married and then have a baby or whatever, like, this happens to them. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to have a baby. What if I get married and then I can't have a baby and then my husband like doesn't want to be with me or like, I don't know. There's just like so many things. So I feel for Amanda and, but I also want to say 
I was told in college by a doctor that I most likely won't be able to have children the natural way. They were like, you probably can't get pregnant. And they said it so like, whatever. And I was like, what? <laughs> so imagine, you know, I'm 40 years old and now I have four children. I've had four pregnancies. So, and I, I, I only one of them was on purpose. <laughs> Booyah. Okay. I'm sweating now. Again, I decided to wear a hoodie today. Okay. So we see a lot of, a lot going on. Carl doesn't want to be on camera. Lindsay and Danielle are yelling. There's two new girls. One says her ex-boyfriend of four years cheated on her with Danielle. So that's awkward. Um, there's a new guy who's licking someone's toes. Like that is, nope. That is a hardcore deal breaker for me. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Um, Maya versus Lindsay is interesting. Maya kind of calls her a bitch. But also Kyle versus Carl? Who would have thought, right? I felt really awful for Carl in that moment when Kyle said, if Carl walks away, the company wouldn't feel a thing. Like, that is so mean to say to somebody. I just... I don't know, but Corey is joining us from Winter House, the one who was hooking up with the girl who expects compliments. Um, but apparently he's dating the, one of the new girls, so that should be interesting. We will see. All right, finally. Oh, my gosh. We're like 50 minutes in. I'm going to go through. Oh, I'm sweating so much going on this week. Okay. We're finally getting into the shows. Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 7, Episode 13, Sisterhood of the Traveling Beasts. This episode, I'm going to read the episode description. Giselle receives some serious news from her doctor. Finally planning her wedding, Robin is adamant about keeping some guests off the list. Mia and Jacqueline get into an explosive argument on their way to celebrate Ashley's birthday. And then I think the rest of the description got cut off. Um, yeah. The Mia and Jacqueline thing is scary to me. When she said she that Jacqueline, I was sitting here feeling bad for Jacqueline, but then she said like Jacqueline threw a brick at her head once. Like, what is going on with these two? Like, they got a long history. They're basically like sisters and it's scary, but Mia was ruthless. She, even Candace was like, girl, <laughs> tone it down. So if Candace is telling you to tone it down, yeah. I don't know. Um, I love a shaman moment. Anytime housewives have a shaman, a psychic, a tarot card reader, a medium, a ghost hunter, whatever it is, I'm here for it. I think it's so fun. Um, yeah. There was a moment where Can Candace looks so good. I posted on my IG. Don't have it here, but her outfit looked amazing. And then I was kind of disappointed in the Karen versus Sharice thing. Like, I didn't even understand what was going on. And somebody posted, oh, shoot, I'm sorry. I can't remember the off the top of my head. Oh, it was She Speaks Bravo, Emily from She Speaks Bravo. She played a clip of Hannah Burner when she goes, she's arguing with or talking with Kyle Cook and goes, don't talk about my father and like storms off. And I... 100% thought of that same clip when that moment happened. I'm like, what is Karen doing? And then I started thinking, is she trying to like do something? And then this theme of cheater brand has been coming up all season for Karen. You know, like I still love her, but Karen, uh, come on, come on. All right, I'm going to the next show. Family Karma, one of my favorites. Look at them. Oh, my God. I just love. Well, except for you, Rishi. Sorry. Um, Family Karma, season three, episode nine, cooked and served. The episode description is, as the aunties and uncles gather for a cook-off, long simmering tension between Dharma and Reshma comes to a boil. Nicholas struggles with the role his parents will play at his wedding. Ugh. 
the show, guys. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's so good. I just love all of it. Like, they start off the episode with Vishal and Amrit getting their bro talks. Like, how cute is their bromance? I just love it. They're so freaking cute. But um, I guess Vishal and Rich are doing good because Vishal hasn't been drinking. And we see that Amrit's wedding plan planning is getting stressful, like we heard in the episode description. It was very, it's very sad. These moments, like I appreciate Family Karma and the Family Karma cast so much because they are giving us so much that I truly feel honored to be able to witness. Like these are very heavy issues that happen in, especially in like, you know, families where there's multiple generations and there's, you know, like my mother's uh, an immigrant. So just that whole thing, like we have things that come up that will, you know, lie back in that, you know, original traditional culture. And it's like, as the first generation here, I have to be aware of the differences and how that plays into the dynamics of everything. And it's just, it's a lot. So I appreciate all of them. Um, I really didn't understand the fight between Dharma and Reshma, but Reshma was very intense, which made me think like, maybe there is something. I thought Dharma was kind of reaching. And I said this before, <sighs> Brian's mom, her parenting triggers me. I don't love the diehard blind loyalty for your children because it enables people. Th those children turn into adults. And look at Brian. He's how old and he's still not moved out of his parents' house. Like I know that's like also a traditional thing, so I'm not going to knock on it too hard. But he kind of is a know-it-all. <laughs> and he kind of is like a little Peter Pan in a way. Sorry, Brian. I still love you, but grow up. <laughs> Move out. Grow up. Sorry. Okay. Now I'm like getting hot again. Told you. Sweaty bitch over here. So what else? What else? What else? What else? Vishal asked Richa to go to therapy. And actually, I thought that moment was really, really sweet. Because I know so many women, wives, who ask their husband to go to therapy. But I don't often see husbands asking their wives to go to therapy, even though they're not legally married. Um, so I really love that. Again, just love, love, love family karma. I can't say more positive things. Raj Vaswani, I love you. You're the best. Die Hard Stan, right here. Oh, so that night on Watch What Happens Live, we had Ashley from Potomac, Ashley Darby, and Brian Benny from Family Karma. And they addressed it on Watch What Happens Live. Andy asked Ashley about her and Luke, and she confirmed they are done. They are done. Oh, so the reason why I'm so happy about this is for one, I never like these two together. Hook up, whatever, go have fun. That's fine. But as a former single mom, I was highly triggered by the thought of Ashley showing up in Minnesota with her two babies and Luke being like, whoa, I changed my mind. And I just couldn't, I was like, if this happens, if I, Oh my God. Number one, I'm a witch. Number two, I would be so sad. So I'm glad to hear that they are over, but also brav bros. I won. I won the bet. They thought that Ashley and Luke were going to go for an entire year. Champion! I am a sore winner, but a good loser. I'm collecting on that bet because, oh, yes. So pumped. 
Also, something that was interesting that Brian said on Watch What Happens Live is that someone from Summer Winter House was rude to him. And it was confirmed that it wasn't Luke. I don't think it's Jason. I really don't think it's Jason. And I really don't think it's Andrea. So I don't know. It could be a female. We'll see. We'll see. All right. I'm going to move on to Below Deck. Below Deck Season 10, Episode 7. Eat me in seven different languages. I freaking love Chef Rachel Hargrove. Okay, episode description. Camille takes Captain Sandy's warning seriously as she tries to turn things around in her new role as a full-time stewardess. Ali Alyssa struggles to forgive Camille for her past shortcomings. Ross confronts Tony's lack of urgency. The crew has high hopes of success for this charter, but the heat is on when the guests' strong opinions and demands test the crew's patience and Chef Rachel's abilities. Number one, Chef Rachel is unflappable. I mean... Well, I don't know if that's entirely true, but she, I think she's badass. Like I want to go, I might put it on my vision board to have Chef Rachel cook a meal for me and manifest that shit because every time I watch, I'm like, oh, I'm so hungry. It just looks so good. Oh, I need to. These uh, guests are awful, by the way. They, I thought they were going to be cool because they were like all about smoking the hookah. Not that like smoking hookah is the same as smoking weed, but I was just like, you know, like respect for your uh, level of detail and making sure that you can smoke because that's how I would be. I'd be like, wait, where can I smoke? And just tell me what's off limits. What can I do? What can I do? Um... But yeah, this crew is kind of a mess. I really don't like Ross, the bosun. I think he's super unprofessional and creepy with the women. Um, so is, what's his name? The lead deckhand, Tony, who's like hooking up with Camille. And then we have, um, no, not Tony. Tony is the guy that I do like, but he's very stubborn and like he's very set on his regimen. Regimen of like working out and getting up early. And I respect that too. I was like, oh my God, that's so great. But they're like, this is a hard one. Can you, like, I think it's extremely important for people to have time to, it's like self-care, like daily self-care. And I'm not mad at him for wanting to do that. But then they're talking about like, okay, you can't make the schedule your work schedule around your schedule, but like, I don't know. I kind of feel like, ugh, I don't know. That's a tough one. There's a lot of factors that go into it. So it'll be interesting to see how they, how this all plays out. I'm going to move on to one of my new favorites. Oh my God. Southern Hospitality, season one, episode six, rumor has it. Episode description is Grace Lily tries to impress Leva by creating a new event at Bourbon and Bubbles, but worries no one will support her after the disastrous trip to Charlotte. Joe Bradley pursues a promotion that could impact his budding romance with Mia. The return of a controversial Republic employee causes division among the crew and unearths a scandalous rumor Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> Look at TJ in this picture. Okay, that's for those who don't know um, and can see the, the slides. On the top, we have Emmy yelling um, at Brad. And um, Will is her boyfriend sitting next to her. And then you got Maddie on the other side. And okay, so we can basically... Comes out of nowhere. She's plopped into this episode. What episode are we on? Six. There's been five episodes and this girl hasn't been there. And all of a sudden, just shit hits the fan. We got, there's so many things. Okay. Regan has a boyfriend named Reese who actually, TJ, TJ's on the bottom, or, or is the lower picture on this slide. TJ, I love this picture because that's literally me during this scene 
like I don't want to give it away, but I like want to talk about it. So Reagan comes back from traveling with her boyfriend Reese and who we don't see, even though it's her birthday dinner and he's not there, but all her friend half her friend group is there. And one of the guys, one of the guys who's there is Brad, who allegedly slept with Regan while she was with Reese. And while he was dating Maddie's roommate, Sierra, and Maddie, Emmy and Will are all like, I guess they're on Sierra's side because they're like, you guys had sex or whatever. And they're like, no, we didn't. And like Brad said, he talked to Reese about it a ton of times. And like, then... (laughs) So this is already a lot, right? This is one episode. But then right in the last moment, this is what the picture is. Brad, I think he had about enough. He was like, why are you all coming at us when you got your own stuff that I heard about? And he proceeds to out Emmy and Trevor. I guess they hooked up in college. Trevor is Maddie's current boyfriend who cheated on her, who used to work at Republic, who doesn't work at Republic anymore, who everyone hates, including me, I think. But apparently Emmy and Trevor hooked up and Brad said, Brad released this information about peanut butter being licked off of a penis. I don't know if I can say that <laughs> with Trevor, which is like, oh my God. Number one, this is hard for me because I like everyone. I'm not loving Will. I'm sorry. I want to love Will and I'm open to loving Will, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, I love you, Brad, but this was kind of effed up. To release that kind of information is, I mean, it has nothing to do with the conversation that you guys were all having. And it also, from a female standpoint, I felt for Emmy because whenever stuff like this gets leaked out, it's always like high fives to the guy, Trevor, who's a it's garbage. And the girl gets, you know, shit for it. And while this information is very entertaining to me, I do not judge Emmy whatsoever. And in fact, Brad, you kind of have a citation against you now. Like that was kind of low. I hope there was an apology at some point. Um, And you know what? Good for you, Emmy for owning it and whatever that was between two people and that was in the past and why are we talking about it but I do want to know like okay was this premeditated (laughs) was like were they hooking up and they're like somebody get the peanut butter (laughs) let's go get it or was it like we're hooking up and like Oh, there's peanut butter. Like, I don't know. I just have a lot of questions about that. But I am grossed out that it was with Trevor. I just, I don't know. The whole thing, I was like, and then also I was like, why peanut butter? Why peanut butter? So then I did a poll on Instagram in my stories. And because I'm like, I bet you other people would do this. Like, I wouldn't do it. I'm not into like food in intimate areas like I just don't want any of that and but I was like I bet you a lot of people are into this and I was kind of right half and half guys almost half and half 48 percent said yes they would lick peanut butter off their partner in an intimate moment 52 percent said no this is on Instagram on Twitter Twitter y'all are liars <laughs> said no, 41.1% said yes. 
So I better not hear or see any judging. All right, I'm going to wait. What's after this? One other thing. Um, maybe we'll talk about this in Canvas Mom Boss because there was something that Leva, Leva was talking about how, you know, what she says goes. And she was yelling, not yelling, but like reprimanding the staff because of their, what they posted on social media and their downtime when they weren't working. And granted, yes, they do have, um, Lava's brand in her, in their like profile. So I don't know, like, what are the lines? I guess it depends on the situation. And at the end of the day, from a legal standpoint, like literally Leva owns this place. She can make whatever rule she wants. Um, but if you're a business owner, you want to be fair. You want to like, I wouldn't want people to be like, oh, if I work for Jenny Blaze, I can't do this. And I really love to do this, you know, not saying that like what they were doing is like they love to do it. They were like just getting wasted or whatever. And I don't know. I just don't know. I want to know what other people think, though. Maybe I'll talk about it on Canvas Mom Boss because I did skip over. Oh, wait, no, I didn't get to it yet. <sighs> um, oh, my gosh, there's still so much to cover. All right. I'm going to move on from Southern Hospitality because, like I said, there's just so much. Below Deck Adventure. Okay, Below Deck Adventure Season 1, Episode 10, Abseiling Away. I didn't know what abseiling was, so I had to Google it. And I guess it's when you, like, go down the mountain. That's what their, like, big excursion was, which did look scary. Like, I get nervous with their crazy excursions. It's kind of exciting. And it made me think of Bear Grylls. Like, they had a helicopter. And that was cool. Like, let's see more. I love this. Um, let me read the episode description. Tension between departments leaves Faye fed up as she vows that she's not going to be the nice chief stew they've had all season. Captain Carey mentors Lewis in the wheelhouse and suggests to his bosun he consider promoting someone to lead deckhand so he can spend more time working on his career path. Misconduct on the radio upsets the captain and thrusts Lewis back on deck. Unable to trust his team to perform the most basic tasks. Oh, whoops, I read that wrong. Like, my inflection was wrong, whatever. Anyways, frustrations continue to build between bunk mates in the interior, leading Casey to make a plan with Jess to do a room swap. The deckies take their turn entertaining the, entertaining the guests in drag. On an epic abseiling adventure, Faye reaches her breaking point and cries in front of guests over forgotten chips. Yeah, Faye's intense. Like, she was, I think she broke the professionalism once she started raising her voice and like keep going with Oriana in front of the guests. Um, and then captain, he, so I went live with captain Carrie this week on Instagram and, um, let me do this. and he seems so like he was beating himself up over yelling at Nathan in front of the guests. But I kept telling him, like, okay, dude, number one, you're yelling because of a safety reason. If this was, like, you're yelling because you're just yelling, like, that's different. But there was, like, a, a safety thing. Um, and he did apologize to the guests. And he talked about it on the live, the IG live together. Um, so I just love Captain Gary. He's just so great. And he's very, like professional and focused on being professional. I really love that about him. Um, WTF, the chef, she pulled a freaking hair out of the food and gave it back. Gross. Number one, like, and then she's like, oh, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Like at this point, when you got a plate in front of you and there's a hair in it, you need solutions. You need to do the right thing. And I think she panicked and that's why she just pulled it out, but that's not okay. Regardless, even if it's the charter guests hair, you make a new one. That's just, that's like basic service. Right. And then also maybe I'll talk about this on cannabis mom boss next week, but Faye keeps talking about the girls doing 
full hair and makeup. So she's like, I want hair down. And that's what the chef was saying. Like, oh, my hair's in a bun. My hair's in a bun. And all your girls have their hair down. Again, regardless of where it came from. But I want to know from a boss standpoint, like, can you be like, I want you to wear lipstick, wear a powerful lipstick. That's the face that I thought was so funny, which I'm all about powerful lipstick. Like, yeah, wear it. But are you allowed to say you have to do this as a boss? Like, I need someone from HR <laughs> to tell me because I don't know. It just does something about it doesn't feel right. So, oh God, here we go. I'm going to move on to this nightmare. Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. It was a season three finale, episode 14, Trials and Tribulations. The episode description says, when Heather is asked about how she got her black eye, a heated argument ensues between her and Jen. What? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. At Heather's book cover reveal party, rumors are revealed and tensions rise. As Jen's trial gets closer, the women are surprised when the case takes an unexpected turn. So again, I wrote a tiny blog post. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes. Just giving like a one-liner on how I feel about each of the ladies after the season is over. Um, I won't read it word for word, but essentially everyone knows I love Lisa Barlow. Um, I'm here for Whitney. I She's done a 180 for me. I did not love her in the beginning of this show because I hated bad weather. I was like so against bad weather. But now that bad weather is split up, I feel like Whitney is going the right way. And I knew all along that Heather Gay is a fraud. Um, go check out my interview with Marilla Bueno, her former bestie slash beauty lab employee slash personal assistant slash family friend. This was not like, oh, we just hired him. He was there for one week. Like, no, they have a relationship. Okay. And I inter interviewed him back in April when they were still filming season three. So go check it out because it confirms everything that we've seen on season three. Everything. And excuse my language, but fuck her fucking eye. Try not to swear, but I had to. I hate her eye. I hate Heather Gay's eye. Is that allowed? <laughs> I'll just say that. Anyways, okay. So uh, Zach Peter uh, posted, my friend Zach Peter, <laughs> he's so cute. Um, he read Heather's book and said it's bogus. She doesn't even talk about the eye. She is so Phony. I can't even like the facts are there, people. I'm getting hot about it. Oh my gosh. Jen Shaw. Okay. Oh my God. There's like just so much. Okay. So in that episode, I thought Angie K did like the most. She did the most. I think she earned a spot on the cast. Uh, Dana, I'd like to see her maybe again as a friend of, but I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't think they did a good job of editing her, or, like producing her or whatever. I don't know what's going on behind their scenes. So who knows? But, um, obviously Jen's going to jail like soon. That was, that's pretty crazy, uh, for six and a half years. And I am not proud of this at all, but I'm going to tell you guys something, I went and after I heard the news, I went to my parents' house to go pick up my kid and I just randomly felt the need, not that they care. I was like, Jen Shaw got six and a half years. <laughs> and then my dad was like, who? And he's like, what'd she do? And I told him, he goes, one of your cousins just got over, t over 10 years. He's, he like defrauded one elderly person out of like $10,000. Not proud of my family lineage there, but that was my white side. Um, but speaking of families, wait, I'm going to skip this one. I did a 23andMe <laughs> genetic test, and I swear to God, there's a fourth cousin of mine who is a Barlow. So 
Essentially, we're cousins. Cousins. According to Heather, we're related. So we're like sisters, basically. Um, also, there's a new rumored castmate um, for season four. And Face Reality posted a picture. Um, she got this from Faces by Bravo on Twitter. But this person, I thought it was Heather. This person looks just like Heather, but with brown hair. And she's allegedly a new cast member. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Like, someone from Salt Lake City production is obsessed with Heather Gay's jawline. I don't understand what's going on. Maybe they are cousins. Um, I'm going to go back, though, because uh, Dr. Bravo on Twitter, Bravo Pharmacist, tweeted that word on the street is that these two con artists are going to the same facility in Texas. They are definitely teaming up and coming out with another con business. They show a picture of Jen Shaw and Elizabeth Holmes. Do you guys know who Elizabeth Holmes is? She's the lady who defrauded millions. Was it billions? I don't know the exact amount, but Oh my God, they're, oh my gosh. Can you imagine those two in jail together? So wild. Um, But then get this, real stone, the real stone housewives posted that Whitney tweeted, so I get refollowed after her ride or die was sentenced yesterday, wild. And it showed Heather Gay is now following Whitney Rose on Instagram. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Oh, boy. Um, this is nuts. This is nuts. Um, allegedly. Okay, so we saw a picture of Jen Shaw getting glammed up. And we think Andy confirmed it as well that he, he's trying to do a sit down with Jen Shaw. And so I heard some rumblings, you know social media or whatever but it sounds like andy and jen are having a sit down and wait i just said that <laughs> no the rumblings are that there's the one-on-one -on -one is going to be next week did they say next week i think so because then they said the finale or the reunion which is allegedly two parts is not starting till the 25th that means there's one week in between Maybe that's when they do the one-on-one. -on -one. We will see. Hey, 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 hey. I can't with these people. This is too much. Too much. Too much. Uh, people are upset that Jen went out to dinner with 20 people after her sentencing. I mean, I honestly, I would have done the same thing. Like, they got to eat. They're, they're all there. It's not like they're celebrating. Like, she's still going to jail. Like, everyone needs to settle down. Um, but I did think some, one thing was funny. I guess Teresa Judice commented on Jen Shaw. Or someone asked her, like, is this similar to, you know, when you got convicted or something? She And all she said was that she couldn't relate <laughs> Yes, Teresa. I don't know. I can't relate. But it's so funny. All right. I'm going to move on to Miami. Miami. I love this show. Season five, episode nine of The Real Housewives of Miami. Hot off the press. Episode description. By the way, Peacock episode descriptions are way shorter than Bravo episode descriptions. Just saying. Um, Lisa discovers both Lenny and his girlfriend are talking to the press about their marriage. This shit is wild, y'all. <laughs> this, like, it almost seems like this can't be real. This cannot be real, right? Like, Lenny literally is talking to the press and then texting Lisa to get him bananas and strawberries. That's not right. It's not right. Call 911, as Alexia would say. Ugh, Lenny. I like, I want to believe Lenny's side, but I, I, I mean, I don't want to believe it because like, I'm always going to take 
you know, I'm going to be team Lisa. But I just like, I want to not, I want this to not be true. <laughs> I don't want to believe that this is still possible. Even like, I know this is going to keep happening in the world forever, but with all those cameras too, it just, it's too much. It's too much. Call the police. Um, yeah, Lenny is psychotic. I just have to say, Alexia and Frankie, anytime they have a scene, it literally makes me cry. I, I cry every time. Um, so that's not like unusual. But when Julia and Martina are on the screen together, I cry too. Like when she was swimming with her last episode and then with the whole meal that she recreated from 14 years ago. Like, that was so sweet. And Martina knew. She was like, yes, yes. And then they then they started talking about baby. I don't even, like, that was wild. That just took it to a different place for me. But <laughs> this show is so funny. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Kiki Barth because she needs to be on this cast picture. I'm mad about it. I am angry because she deserves to be up there. She is so funny. She is so great. Her energy, I just love, love, love her. I want Kiki on this cast next season. I could do without Dr. Nicole. Although we are getting something coming up. So who knows? Maybe like I'll change my mind. But I'm like, Larsa has flipped me just like Whitney. Like now I love Larsa. I think she's hilarious. Her level of wealth is just hilarious to me. The way she looks at a yacht ramp and is like, ugh, peasants. Like where's your real yacht ramp? And the way she is with her daughter shopping, she's like, no, too grown. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. She's like, how do we spend $2,000? I just, that's what I want in a housewife. I want, give me all the rich, filthy, rich stuff. And like, let it be legit though. No fraudsters. So funny. Um, but yeah, Nicole's big mad, huh? I mean, Larsa does keep giving digs at her. And I'm not saying that's like great or anything, but like, that's also part of the housewife job. And I just think... I kind of like seeing Nicole bothered. I just don't understand why she's here. Like, what, what does she bring? Who loves Dr. Nicole? And tell me why, please. Because I'm not getting it. I feel like she's kind of boring. But anyways, the mid-season trailer came out. And we see, like, we're going to see some of Nicole's engagement party. Julia's looking to adopt, but is having issues. Lenny's mom starts turning on Lisa. That's, like... Whoa, uh, Frank, Frankie's branching out with Uber. It's so cute. Adriana versus Marisol. Didn't see that coming. Well, I guess I could see that coming. Um, Nicole gets shady with Larsa and sends her something. I think Larsa was like, Larsa kind of liked it. She was like, okay. <laughs> so I kind of, I am excited about that, I guess. Um, Todd, I really like Todd, Alexia's Todd. But he, when he gets mad, he's a little scary. He goes, what's wrong with you? And it looked like it was to Dr. Nicole when her husband's there. So I don't know. That was kind of crazy. It could have been just editing too. But then the last part of the editing, editing is, I think it's Lisa Hoxine. It's somebody with like a mask and sunglasses and a hat being pushed in a wheelchair. Yeah. So crazy, but that's it, y'all. I that was an hour and a half. I don't even think I talked about everything, but I want to make sure that I thank you all for tuning in. Please like, leave a review, comment, share. These are the freest ways to support Bravo and Blaze. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications. Eastern for Cannabis Mom Boss and every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern for Bravo and Blaze. Stay lit, fam.